Welcome back treasure hunters. It's Joe, the treasure hunting dad. And I want to go over some recent treasures I found in the past week or so. I think I purchased them at a really good price. And I wanna show you how you can possibly do the same thing to make some purchases and then turn around, identify what you found and flip it for some profit. So the first find I want to show you is this plate, and this is a piece of studio pottery. And you can tell it's studio pottery. If you're used to seeing studio pottery, you could tell probably just by looking at it. Uh, it's very, it's got a kind of modern style to it, I would say. But when you turn it around, it is signed here. And this was done by Jim Kemp, and I actually think Signature is supposed to go this way, but it is signed here in hand, like uh, hand signed or hand incised on the back, and the front's really colorful, kind of a cool design. And you know, there's some various shapes, and it just I don't know, it's all it overall, it's a very eye catching piece here, and it is ready to hang on the wall. So, this is this is made to, you know, be more of a wall decoration. Obviously, it's not the best to use as an actual plate. But I picked this up at a Goodwill and it was, I think, like $239 or $219 or something. But it was extremely cheap. I found it buried within a bunch of the porcelain china type plates. And just by looking at it this way, you can tell it's a little bit taller than most plates and it just kind of stuck out like the rim. So I just checked it out and as soon as I saw the front, I knew it was a piece of studio pottery and looking at the back, seeing that it's signed and stuff, I didn't know what signature this was, but I just posted it to one of the Facebook groups for identifying studio pottery and within, I don't know, 10 minutes, Somebody recognized the style and the signature. I don't really know how much I could get for this. I've seen some of his work selling for over a hundred. I'd probably price this at like 50 bucks. I think that's under what I've seen online, but I mean, it's just a regular size plate. There's not anything really extreme about it. And I only paid two, like a little over $2. So. That's a great profit margin and it should be really easy to ship. So it's, uh, it'll be a good deal for the buyer and myself. So the next piece I found, this is actually a stone bowl and I believe this is agate. Uh, I don't know exactly where it was made, most likely either in South America or Europe, I would think, but bottom's nice and polished. It's actually pretty big. Uh, when I did research in the store, most of these stone bowls were a lot smaller. It's got really great color. It's very polished. The only thing wrong with it is a small chip here. And I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the camera or not, but there's a very small chip and it's not super noticeable. I mean, it's a stone bowl, so it's like, I don't think it's really that big of a deal, but I got, and it said as is, um, probably because of that chip, but it was only priced at two ninety nine, and I saw, I didn't really get too much in just because it was only two ninety nine, and I knew it was worth a lot more than that, but I saw some smaller bowls, per, um, posted for like two fifty but this does have damage to it. I haven't put this up online yet, but it is a really nice piece, very well made. And again, the only issue is that little chip. So I don't know, I'll probably post this maybe at like 150, see if it sells. If not, there's only three bucks, so I'll knock the price down. 
Next thing I found here, I also got it at a Goodwill, and this was actually $7.99, but this is a hand-carved wood sculpture. It's a folk art piece. There's no signature that I could see on it. I just thought it was, I don't know, super unique. It's got this old mountain man type guy with a feather in his cap. It's got a double barrel shotgun. Looks like he's, you know, stepping over some rocks and uh, an old stump, probably out hunting or something, I would guess. But seeing that this is hand carved and you can tell on the bottom too, that the folk artist used a lathe probably to, you know, form the upper half or take off bark or whatever. And then the deep grooves here, you know, you can see throughout, you know, he used various sculpting tools and, and all that to create this. And it's all out of one piece, which is pretty cool. You know, sometimes cheaper pieces will, you know, you'll be able to tell either on the bottom, it, you know, there won't be, it won't be really evident that it's a folk art piece. And also you might see numerous pieces of wood used, but you know, this is all one piece. And it's fairly big. I mean, it's probably a foot tall. So for $7.99, and this thing was really dusty too. So I imagine it was probably made in the 70s or 80s. Um, so for $7.99, I thought it was a really cool piece. Very unique. And I should be able to sell it. So this next piece I found here, I actually bought because I had a piece of art that I will show you in a couple minutes uh, that I got at auction. I actually bought this for the frame. I was going, because the piece of art that I bought, um, it actually wasn't at auction. It was one of the eBay sales that I'm going to talk about. But it's about the same size as this painting. And I bought it because the one on eBay was not framed. And it was just a piece of the canvas had been taken off the stretcher. So I got this because I was thinking about using this frame because the pieces of art are about the same size. But then I researched, this is signed Antonio and it's a pretty common scene uh, here that you might see beyond it being snowy, uh, you know, at the thrift store, most of the time these kind of pieces of art are known as starving artist works or Chinese factory works that uh, they're, you know, usually the name signed is just a first or a last name. And usually they're landscapes. Most of the time they're not snowy like this, but I did do a quick search and maybe this was somebody that was a little more well known, but his, you know, some of the works, were posted and had sold for over a hundred bucks. And this is a smaller piece, very light. And it was priced at $4.99. So I know I'll be able, I should be able to get between 50 and a hundred bucks for it, I think. So I decided not to take it out of the frame and got myself another piece to list. Here's another smaller piece of art that I found at Goodwill and it's still got the sticker. This is a recent find. Uh, it's $4.99. As soon as I saw this, it kind of reminded me of, you know, those impressionist artists that, you know, just, uh, I don't know, did some amazing oil paintings, you know, back in the day. But this is actually different because it's on a piece of metal and most likely it's copper or it's brass. I'm not exactly sure. Kind of looks like copper to me, just the coloring. But this is uh, an enamel piece. So the artist used enamel to create this scene here of 
this woman with an umbrella and a white dress and a hat kind of just going through a meadow or the edge of a forest or something, I guess. It is signed here in the bottom right or bottom left. And it's signed J Polk. So I saw this and immediately caught my eye, especially like, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but obviously tap it, you know, it's on metal. Most of the time, I mean, people are going to use like artists back, you know, in the mid century used enamel for that paint would just chip off. And it also gives it kind of a raised feel. So all these white marks down here at the bottom of the tree are raised up just because the enamel is layered, obviously. So this was priced at $4.99. I did a quick search for Jay Polk because it's obviously very readable down here at the bottom and found that her work had sold for over a hundred bucks and a lot of it was this size. But the one that I did see that was sold, I think it sold for 125 and it was a much more basic, just flower type work. And this is actually a pretty cool piece of art. There's a little bit more to it than just like a flower. So I think it's a really good buy. I'll probably price this right around the same and if anybody buys it, great. If not, I have no problem knocking the price down, seeing that it was only five bucks. So this next piece I just recently got yesterday. And this is a hand carved stone Buddha sculpture. And it's not even a lot of sculptures like this were done with soapstone, which is a pretty soft stone and you can even leave scratches in it with your fingernail. This is actual, I'm not sure what kind of stone it is, but this is a much harder stone. Um, this was actually set up uh, most Salvation Army. I got this at Salvation Army. It was $9.99 and most Salvation Armies, at least around where I've been, have glass cases, whether they're cabinet cases or more of the traditional, you know, cash, like by the cash register type cases. But this was in there. And when I saw it, you know, it's just a pretty typical. I've seen a lot of different sculptures with this happy Buddha. But I could tell that, and I did wipe this off, but I could tell it was older just because it was very dusty, dirty kind of feel. And then when I picked it up, there's still a old price tag on the bottom and this price tag says 235 bucks so just given that and the fact that it was only 10 bucks and i have sold numerous buddhist type sculptures uh, most of them were metal but this stone one is really cool and the details a lot of the cheaper versions will be made of soapstone and they don't have a lot of detail but the detail in his face is actually really well done uh, you can even see like his tongue his teeth are all carved out and his eyes and nose and everything so it's actually pretty detailed in the face the rest of the sculpture not so much but that's kind of what matters it's a focal point so i definitely think I'll be able to sell this for at least a hundred bucks, but I'll probably price it more to start and see where it leads me. This is the next piece of art that I found. I got this at Goodwill for $4.99. And at first I thought it was a print, but if you take a closer look and I can't cause I don't have a painting in my hand, obviously. This is actually a painting and you can tell mostly on the white flowers. If you kind of hold it so the light reflects off it, you can see a subtle change in uh, the texture and you can kind of see where there's more paint, it's a little bit raised. So this is an actual painting behind glass. It's really nicely done. Obviously it's very detailed and realistic. 
And this was done by Jay Monroe. I didn't really do a whole lot of research beyond searching the name. And I did find a website and also I found a bunch of listings on eBay. Um, beyond that, since it was only five bucks, I saw that it was listed on eBay for, I don't know, 250 or 225 or something. So I just took it because any original piece of art that's really nicely done, like uh, this piece here, it's obviously a good price for only five bucks. Even if it's an unknown artist, you know, you could still make a profit off of it. Next piece here, I found at Goodwill also. I think this is $6.99. It's framed professionally. It's really well. The frame's in excellent condition. And the work itself, this is a really detailed, nicely done etching of, looks like some kind of farm scene with a couple small houses or whatever you want to call them. And there's a horse and a carriage and stuff, but it's hand colored. The only thing with this, I don't know who the artist is. I know it's Tanya, but I could not find a match for the actual artist's last name. This one was numbered 28 out of 50 and it is titled. I'm not exactly sure even what the title says. But I just I didn't do a whole lot of research on this. Again, given the price and uh, you know just the way it's framed, you can tell it's not just like a factory piece of art or something that you would find like a craft store or something. This is a nicer piece and it's very detailed and well done. And there's only, you know, it's limited to 50. So once I figure out who the artist, I haven't listed this on any Facebook groups or anything. So once I figure out who the artist is, I'd have a better chance of figuring out how much I might be able to make off of it. But still for $6.99, I think it's a really good buy. Here's the next piece I found. I actually found two, two pieces by this artist, the local Ohio artist. And this is an original watercolor. And I really like, I mean, I like uh, lighthouse paintings anyway, but I thought this was really cool. I like how it kind of shows the coast going up into the background. And this was done by Kathy Sabbath. Ore, I think, or no, there's a CZ in the end. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. But you can see the OWS, which is Ohio Watercolor Society. So she was a part of that. And it's not a huge painting, it's just kind of a little bit larger. But I didn't want to let this go or the next one I'll show you in a second. They're only $10.99, but artwork this nice, even if the person isn't as well known as some other artists and you could still get a couple hundred bucks or 150 or something for a painting like this and this size let's take a look at the next one here's the next one you can tell it's fairly similar it's another lighthouse painting this might even be the same lighthouse just from a different angle on I mean, the back side of it instead of going up that little path. This one's done vertically, obviously. There's a little more color in the sky, like there's a sunset or something. And this one is also signed here. It's a little harder to read since it's not in white. But either way, got both of these nice watercolors for $10.99 each. Haven't priced them yet or put them up for sale. But again, I'll probably start somewhere around probably like 150 bucks or something and see if they sell. And if not, I have no problem with knocking them down a bit. So as I promised, I wanted to show you a couple eBay finds that I noticed were at a value price. And that's because the artists were not recognized or they weren't stated in the listing so they were just sold as antique paintings 
and I was flipping through and I saw a couple that I liked and ended up doing some research on the actual artist and found one of which I already have a painting of. So I recognized right away the name, but they did not do their research. So I purchased both at a really good value and hopefully I can make a nice profit off of reselling these. This first one, this actually didn't come in a frame. Uh, this was just the canvas. It was taken away from the stretcher. I found this frame at a Goodwill for like $2.99 or $3.99. It's a handmade frame. Uh, I think it's black walnut and it's even stamped like um, on the back by the person that made it. So it fit pretty nicely. It's a high quality frame so it, and it's a little bit older so it kind of fits this piece of art. So this is like kind of like a harbor scene. It looks like a couple of fishing boats. And down here in the corner, it's signed Mason 03. So that's 1903. And I'm almost positive this is Frank Mason. He did a lot of nautical paintings uh, and this kind of matches his style also. And it's right around the time where he was painting. So I picked this up. I think the person had it listed, I think for like $175 on eBay with free shipping. And I offered them a hundred and they accepted. And I just found this frame and now I have this relisted. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, some of the, some of his paintings sold for quite a bit of money, like, you know, over a thousand or two thousand dollars, but they were a lot larger. They were more in the 24 by 30 range, whereas this is only eight by 10. So I think I priced this maybe around 750 and I'll see if I can sell it for that, but I have no problem reducing the price a bit or running a sale. But this is a very cool antique oil on canvas painting. Okay, and here's my second eBay purchase that I hope to resell. This is also an antique painting, and this was done by Boshin, who I also got a work from him, or a work of his, from an estate auction. He was much more known for his abstract work, so he did a lot of different abstract stuff. So this was kind of unique. I haven't seen uh, another painting by him that is more traditional like landscape. As soon as I saw the name and the title on eBay Boshin, I recognized that and quite a few of his, you know, sold for a nice amount of money. This one is also an oil painting on, the canvas is a little different, but it is on canvas. And I think this might be his earlier work, but here's his signature Boshin down there in the corner in red. And I was able to, this one was also, I think they had it listed for, I think 280, um, a buy it now and then plus shipping. And I offered them 150 and they accepted. So I think total, it cost me 180 bucks. I repriced this. I think I have it listed right now for 1500 and that's kind of at its peak, um, price wise, I think. So Boshin, his real name was, I don't know, Bromhir Stroland or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think he was from the Czech Republic or Poland. He actually did studying and a lot of his work in France. So this is probably, I, again, I think it's probably his um, earlier work. So he got into a lot more abstract stuff and that's what he's better known for. But I hope to resell this and make a decent profit off it. I'll probably end up reducing the price over time. Either way, it was a really cool find. It's in pretty good condition. The only issue with it is there's a small piece of blue paint missing up from the top, but it is really old. And then up here in the corner, there's a little crack in the canvas. But I imagine whoever purchases this, they could easily put a frame around just so it doesn't show the edges and stuff. And that would cover up any of the missing paint from the edges, like in the corner. Um, the only issue would be that little piece of blue. So there are 
uh, quite a few stores I actually found after I found a couple of these paintings. I found some different eBay sellers that didn't have a ton of reviews. So it looked like they were just kind of starting out or weren't like um, some of the big galleries or whatever. And one of the stores where I got this from, I noticed a lot. It looks like they, you know, just from reading the different descriptions on their paintings, not many of them are identified and most of them were purchased from estate sales and stuff. So it looks like they go around and purchase old artwork at estate sales and then just throw it up on eBay for some kind of markup without doing any of the legwork on finding out, you know, who the different artists might be. So that creates a lot of value for people that are either good at doing research or are familiar with art or, you know, that don't mind putting in a little work. You can find some really nice pieces. So I'll probably continue to check back at these different stores to see if I can recognize any of the artists or just any of the work that looks to be like it could be, you know, a good gem to find. And I'll continue to search for some new stores too. I'll let you know if I find anything else. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If this is your first time watching and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so. It really helps me out. Click that bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. I'll be coming out with another video soon on some more thrift store finds as well as my sales over uh, before the holiday, which did take up a lot of my time shipping and getting stuff posted and all of that. So. I'll see you guys next time. Be safe and healthy. Uh, have a great new year and good luck out there treasure hunting.